Hi guys, welcome to this video um, in which I'm going to have a quick look at one of the problems with the Javier Rolon or J Rolon uh, Jetstream 32. Um, I've not long had this aircraft, so um, I'm still learning uh, learning about it. But one of the issues that uh, I've encountered is that it needs a massive amount of trimming with left aileron to uh, to fly, fly straight and level. Um, now. I'll, uh, I'll demonstrate the problem um, in a second, but what we're going to talk about briefly is the is the torque modelling. Basically, there's been a couple of things about the torque modelling with the aircraft, um, and what happens is the torque modelling for the engine. The engines uh, rotate as you look at them; um, they rotate counterclockwise. So, from uh, let me see, from behind the engine, the engines are turning uh, that way. Sorry, and as you look at it, that's that's great. But what happens is, as the engines turn that way, there is a torque effect. It tries to turn the fuselage the other way. So it tries to roll the aircraft to the right, and that applies on both engines. Now, with a with a twin engine aircraft, that shouldn't really be an issue, whether it's clockwise, counterclockwise, um, whether they're rotating in the same direction or not, because you've got an engine on the left wing, an engine on the right wing, and in theory, you've got a plank between them. And it doesn't matter how much they turn, they shouldn't be able to to have a massive effect on that uh, that aileron position for the aircraft. So most aircraft, when you're flying them, you will find that uh, in the checklist it will say aileron and rudder trims set to neutral, which is what we've got here. So to demonstrate the problem, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take off, um, but I'm not going to use the ailerons at all. I'll use a rudder to keep straight uh, because otherwise we'll crash. Um, but I'm not going to use the ailerons at all, and we'll see what happens. Um, and I'll probably have to react fairly smartly after takeoff, and then we'll try and trim it, and we'll see what happens with that. So, brakes off, away we go. Engines powering up. I'm not going to be using any um, any of the manuals for this, so uh, we'll see what we get. But let's get down the runway and try and spring into the air like a like a flighty gazelle. And as I say, I'm not going to use any aileron, I'm just going to use elevator and rudder. Oh, picked a short runway for this, but let's pull back. And, oh, there we go. Immediately you can see the problem. Let's just take a bit of the power off the engine. Right, so let's fly straight and level. Now I've got a lot of, um, a lot of left aileron hold, held in. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to trim. Now you'll have to bear with me two or three minutes whilst I trim. And I kid you not, it's a ridiculous amount of trim. Now, because it's torque effect, it also varies depending on the power settings of the engine, which is which is why uh, you sort of sit there and go, well, you know, hang on a minute, why have I got to put so much aileron trim in? And it's because of the engines, and you know it's because of the engines because when you change the power settings of the engines, you have to change the uh, the, the trim settings. So as I look down here, you can see the aileron trim all the way over to the left. I'm not turning particularly, I'm not banking, but I've had to put my aileron trim all the way over to the left. So that's the problem. Let's have a quick look at the fix. So I'm going to have to close this down and then just quickly flick into X Plane Maker. So, what we're going to do now is just have a quick look at this. So, this is X Plane Maker. I don't really do much in it. Um, this is something that I found out through researching on the internet. Uh, let's open up uh, X Aviation Jetstream, Jetstream 32 Open Aircraft. Now, if you remember, I discussed the, the propellers were turning both in the same direction, but the torque, if you like, of a, of a counterclockwise prope propeller, so the torque of that engine is turning, uh, the engine's turning the propeller that way, the torque reaction tries to go that way, propeller's turning that way, torque reaction goes the opposite way, clockwise, and that's why the whole aircraft was turning clockwise. As I say, I've flown twins, and it's not really something that... it. I've ever really noticed because most of the time it's trim set for takeoff with the elevator and neutral for aileron and uh, rudder but for whatever reason it doesn't seem to like it with this so your fix is to go to standard engine specs location and change one of these these are the 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 propellers it's got the number of blades on the propeller whether it's turning counterclockwise or clockwise and we're going to change one of them doesn't matter which to clockwise so they're turning in opposite directions that means this one's turning counterclockwise, that one's turning clockwise. That means that the torque reactions should be opposite and equal. So, there we go. Let's close that bit then. We've changed that file. Save. And I shall meet you in a moment once I've booted up X-Plane again. 
So here we go guys, back in our trusty jet stream, this time at Coventry Airport. It doesn't make a difference obviously the airport, but um, X-Plane 10 has decided that uh, this is probably the best place if any where to, uh, to have a play with. So just to double check, we've got rudder trim set to neutral, uh, aileron set to neutral, uh, we've got first stage flaps and we are ready to go. Same thing as I'm going to do before, I'm only going to use the rudder to keep straight on the runway and the elevator to take off and we shall see what happens. So off we go. If you'll excuse the dog barking in the background. I don't know if you can hear it, but uh, certainly I can. Okay, here we go. So that's 80 knots. As I say, no aileron on takeoff, so let's get plenty of speed. 120, 125 knots, 130, that should be enough. I haven't flown this aircraft enough to know the numbers. No aileron, look at that. Now there's still a very slight roll to the right, but uh, let's get the gear up. And uh, we'll see, once I've trimmed it out for a climb, just how much of a, of a difference the trim makes. Now, obviously this is a workaround, it's not a fix, um, and I don't know if I'd describe it as a bug, but ultimately um, what you don't want is you don't want to have to, to mess around with, uh, with the aircraft trim, and aileron trim I should say, as it was, in order just to have a flyable experience. So let's just balance it so it's not turning. Let's make sure my trim is spot on. And again, as I say, this is a workaround, so the aerodynamics aren't necessarily going to be perfect, but there we go. So, let's have a look down here, and I have had to trim it a little bit, but look at that, the aileron trim is nowhere near as bad as it was. Now, as I say, it's a, it's a workaround, it's not a fix, but it does mean that this aircraft all of a sudden becomes a lot more uh, enjoyable to fly and a lot more realistic in terms of how to operate it if not realistic 100% aerodynamics wise. So uh, there you go guys, hope you found that useful. Um, if you've got any questions please feel free to post them in the, uh, the remarks. I can't guarantee I will have the answers for you but if not I'll try and find out for you. Um, and as, as I always say if you enjoy the video please don't forget to uh, tick like, subscribe or share. And uh, thank you very much for watching.